and welcome back to the Board Game Snobs podcast. A small division of it called Mini Pod Sesh. This one is number nine with me, Gabi Moraga, and my best friend. Shardiz. Shardiz. AKA Shardy. And also, we have Slack Bad, and this this is horrible. I need to get back into playing board games with you. I don't know what's going on with my life. I cannot believe. Oh, I, can tell you, I can tell you exactly what's going on with oh, life. Oh, really? Oh, really? Wanna, Go. If you want to delve into it. Not really, but. Your job sucks. Well, that's true. And you work <laughs> long 12-hour shifts, and you wake up at the. No, crack no, of no, dawn. No, 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 no. You wish you woke up at the crack of dawn, the butt crack of dawn. <laughs> You wake up at 4, 4.30, 4 30, go to work. Because I got to get there at You know five. what time dawn is? Six-ish. No, no, no. No, no, no. Daylight saving time is seven-ish. So, long And then you short, come home my, my after a long sucks. day of work and you're all tired and cranky. Oh, sometimes, do I, sometimes it depends. Sometimes I'm actually not cranky. It depends. Like, if I do it like four days in a row straight, I like I am trash for the next four days. Like, I'm like, I hate everybody. For the next four days? I hate days? life. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe I got a little dramatic. Three days. A little dramatic. <laughs> but no. Is anyways. I just. You've been I wanna, in a constant funk, and I beg you to quit your job. Okay. And go live under the nearest bridge. You'll I be more want happy. to do it. I really do. So I've decided that after playing a board game with you yesterday, I re- I forgot how much I actually enjoy playing board games. Like I I'm Aww, not like a psycho. Like I'm not in like a. I'm not like really into it like you are, but I do enjoy playing them whenever I do play with you. Like I'm like, it's fat. It's kind of satisfying. Like, oh, check. Did that. Do you enjoy playing board games or drinking wine more? <laughs> what do you mean? That's a question. You can't, you can't do that. If I present you an option. No, 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 no so what is, that's what's, not the option I presented you. That's no, if I presented you. I can't answer the question. Look, you can either play board games with me, and I could choose the one one of the ones you like the most, which you're a big Wingspan fan, or some other game I really that you like. Star like. Realms, Star too. Realms, a good deck builder that me and Charde have played many many times together, in which I dominate her due to my Actually, deck building I feel skills. Like I've won, like I've dominated you. I like, think you forget a good few you times. Forget. You forget the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was to say, do you want a rousing game of Star Realms or this giant glass of wine? Let me rephrase your question. Do you want this do you want red a, blend, a Do you Marlo, want a good a Shiraz, game of Star Realms with wine Cabernet or Sauvignon? just wine? Let's do that. Okay. What's that? Do you want to play Star Realms with wine or do you just want wine? No, but... You're, you're messing up the whole thing. I'm not, I'm present- not messing it That's up. That's not an option. Yes, it is an option. No. I just made no, it an I'm, option. That option's off the table. It's on the table Would now. you rather play a board game or drink that wine? That is not... You cannot do that. I just Because did. you play board games with your... I'm not, board I'm games. not presenting a real world scenario. Would you? That I will not... I refuse to answer the question. It's a stupid question. Like, why no, would... No, it's not a stupid question. Like, it's a would you rather. Would you no, rather it's a this bad, or would it's you a rather bad, that? It's a bad would you rather. Rephrase the would you rather to a better would you rather. The reason I bring it up is the Romer wine or Spire wine bottle is a 1.5 liter glass vessel found in Roman nobleman's tomb in what is now Germany and dates back to sometime between 325 and 359 AD, which makes it at least 1,650 years old. This wine is from the 4th century. No one is sure how the wine smells or tastes due to the fact that they can't predict how it would react to being exposed to the air. So they haven't opened it. But this wine is 1,600 years old. Hey, I heard the longer it is, the better it tastes. That's false. It says there's also <laughs> the danger. On how you store it. There's also the danger that after all this time, it could have become poisonous, although scientists suspect the alcohol would not be dangerous, but just tastes disgusting, writes German newspaper The Local. So I've often heard that if wine sits too long or is not stored correctly, it could just become vinegar. I've had raw wine where it was old, old wine. Raw wine. I say old. And it Nasty tasted wine. just like what you just said. Vinegar. vinegar. And I, it was the dis- most disgusting thing I've ever had. It was disgusting. And they didn't even store it right. It was like stored upside down. 
No, you're supposed to store it upside down oh, wait, to keep wait, wait, the cork no, 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 moist. Sorry. No, no, no. You it soak wasn't, in the cork. It wasn't stored upside down, so the cork got stuck, and it was all weird. I meant to oh, say that yeah, opposite. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't store it where the 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 wine is on the cork and keeps it moist, then the cork can dry out. And that's exactly. And what then happened. when you go to open it, then the cork just like crumbles into yes, the wine. That's exactly what happened. Okay, so I just want to go back to your would you rather question. Would you rather? Play a board game or drink wine? It's that simple. And you fight me on it. It's a simple question. Just answer. I, I think I, because I enjoy wine, I would do, do wine because that's something I actually like. And, of course, you're lush. And I would say that because I I would love to have a vineyard in like in my land. I, I just love wine. It, the history land? of wine is cool to me. My Everything about is wine is this fascinating. Is the way it's. Land produced made I, i've always wanted to go to a um winery and never been before and i thought i was going to go to one one time when i was in hojestown but you went there and you just complained mistaking what the how the wine was spelled i was no no i was thinking we were going to tour everything and see how they made everything how they did the grapes and but no it wasn't like that they get their crap sent to them it wasn't like we can just go walk around and see in their little Ways how they create their wine. You could walk around barefoot and squash some grapes. Yeah, I really want to do that. Just like that movie. Uh, <laughs> walk in the Clouds. Walk in the Clouds. Oh, that was a good. Fantastic movie. movie starring Kenyu Reeves, Ken according on, to Chardonnay. Kenyu. I've always, I thought I said Kenyu. Still wrong. Still wrong, Kay. I, it just, that's a really weird name for me. Kenyu. I it's said how, that. I thought I said that. You Keanu. said Kenyu. That's what you just said. You put a tilde I over the end. Not. There you Keanu. go, Ryan. Kenyu. That's for you, Ryan. Keanu <laughs> Reeves. Okay. Anyways, um, why are we here I would, today? I would Chardin? definitely drink wine. Uh, I are, would <laughs> definitely drink wine. Frack board games. I would Whatever. drink wine all day. Whatever. You, if you tell me for the rest of my life, I could either play board games or drink wine. I'm going wine. I just every think time, that's baby. a horrible. Would you rather? Because like, cause, I don't know. It's just like I love board games, it, but I also love wine. You do not or, love wine. No, no, I don't. You don't love alcohol. wine. <laughs> alcohol. I love I say, alcohol. I'm more of a wine passionate person. You're you're more whiskey and you know alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> uh, uh, alcohol. Just wine was one fermented of those older drinks yeast, back in the fermented BCE, grapes, AD times. Fermented, but uh, ferment it, turn into alcohol. I'm there, baby. <laughs> you know what's something I really would like to do. And this is what DJ's done. I would like to make my own alcohol. Like I'm not get interested. A, get a little kit. I have zero interest. I that'd be so cool. Just bring it to me. I'll, I'll, I don't want to go through the work of making well, it. Just D- bring it DJ's to me. DJ's currently making a beer. Uh, I don't. I can't remember DJ how DJ of disagreeable nerd fame. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like how long it's also take. on our Star Wars RPG playthroughs on this very podcast. Board game stomps. Go ahead. So. I guess I kind of got inspired by him making. Yeah, I just I so don't, I kind of want to do something to do similar. That. I don't know. It just seems kind of cool. Like I didn't know you can just like do that. Like I thought you had to have like a whole no, you can literally- house or something like space. And I I'll have like a small tiny apartment, so I didn't know. Like, you can literally go on Amazon and buy a kit and be brewing you some beer, dude. I'm totally gonna do it one day. Like I'm seriously like that. That seems so cool. And it's not cool because you brew it and then you go through the whole scenario. You have your yeast and then you have to let it sit there. You're so negative. And age and ferment. That's so the that, cool part. No, it's not. I, I want to drink it. I think it's cool. The cool like, part is drinking it. I disagree. I think the process is cool. Respect the process. Respect it, baby. Respect it. Speaking of respecting the process. <laughs> Um, okay. Let's see, how do I merge this? Mandala Stones, a game by Board and Dice. So, me and an Garvey, abstract game. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, me and Garvey had a whole discussion over the word. I'm going to just say how he just said it, Mandala. Because I, I was saying Mandela, like, you know, the African <laughs> president. And I, I thought that's how you said it. And, like, we Googled it. And, like, Google said it the way I said it. No, Google presented Google several presented different it. scenarios. She said it how I said it. And I was like, yeah, God. One was Mandala. One was Mandela. Whatever. So, and then we YouTubed it. And it was Mandala. So, I don't know. It's weird. It's a, I'm going with how I have been saying it. Mandala. Mandala stones. It can be Mandala stones. 
Stones, Mandela Man Stones, whatever. You can I say Mandala. Maybe that's better. This game is super abstract. Mandela. What is a Mandela? It's just a design, so, right? It's a geometric design. Um, you can go further and deep and get historical with it, but generally, when I see when I see the word Mandela, Mandala, whatever, I just think designs, and it's in like those adult coloring books adult a lot of times. Coloring books. I know. I is there know, a nudity? Why are they called adult <laughs> coloring books? It's so <laughs> stupid. Is there a Mandela around the nipples? No, no. That's a thing. I see. Like, why is adult in this already? Because when you put adult in something, it I sounds know. weird. I don't get that. Like, I bought adult, adult coloring, coloring books, books, and they're just oh, like you? they're <laughs> they're just like regular coloring books. So I'm just like, what the heck? Why are they called that? Like, they need to stop that. Like, because they're not for children, and we have dirty minds. They're just detailed geometric designs, and you color them, and it looks cool. And I've seen a lot of mandala designs in them. So that's the only. His or that's the only background I have really, and um, it kind of reminds me of like hippie bohemian stuff. Yeah, it's just it's just an art design. Yeah. So in this game, you have literally two actions. It's very abstract. I bought it because I had heard many good things. It's very pretty. The stones are pretty. It's very azul. Okay. It's very azul like. You yeah. might could say. Yeah. Azul's prettier. Because it's got a different... I like Azul oh, It's better. got a more variety. Mm -hmm. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry. In this game, you set up the board, you put four of these stones in all these spots, and then you have four artists. When you move the artist, if you decide to move the artist, you are going to uh, pick. So you're going to pick these stones according to the artist you move. If the artist has the mandala signature, and I feel like the mandala has like the, it has the ring look around it, uh, whereas the other one does not. Anyway, the artist is two of one kind, two of another. Depending on the artist you pick, you'll pick up the stones around it that match the same art that the manda the artist has. So if the artist looks like, for purposes of the podcast, let's say the artist had a diamond. Well, then you would move it to the spot and pick up all the stones around it that have a diamond shape. That's not in this game. That's just to give you a real world example because I don't know how to explain this any better because <laughs> I have a small vocabulary. So you would pick up the stones around it that have a diamond that match the artist, but you don't pick up a stone that's next to another artist in the space next over. But the game is very, very simple. You're either picking up stones or you're scoring those stones. When you pick them up, you pick them up in a way that you put the first one at the bottom and you go in a clockwise motion and then you stack the next one on top of that, the next one on top of that. Then you take that stack of stones and choose one of the five spaces on your board. I think it's five. And you place it there. If it's a stack of three, you might have an area on your board that says a stack that's three high may score you four points. Or you can put it over here, a stack that's three high may score you one point. You just have to look at your board and know what it looks like. You can put it at the last end where it's like you get points for the amount of different colors in that stack plus one. So you just have to use common sense and put it in the spot that's going to score you the most points. You may end up putting it in a spot that doesn't score you the ideal amount of points. But sometimes you're just stuck with something. So then you pick. That's the picking part. The only other action in this game is scoring. If you have, there's two ways to score. If you have two or more towers where the top stones have matching colors. So if I have a tower here that's a red, a pink, a blue, and a yellow on top. And then over here, I have a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue, and a yellow on top. Well, both those towers have yellows on top. I can score both those towers according to the scoring device that's underneath them. That's basically the game. You can also just score if you have a bunch of mismatched colored stones on different spots and you're poor at this game and you make bad decisions, that's what this scoring is for. Mm -hmm. You can just pick up one stone off of however many you choose and you just score one point a piece. So, it's super, super, super simple. So simple to the... Oh, go ahead. When Sorry. you were explaining the game, you know, I had never played this game, so, you know, 
you had to explain it to me. So I had to t- take me a second. I'll be honest. Um, once I, f- I got the game, once we did a round or whatever, um, are we going to get into it? Because I'm ready to tell you how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, I started playing it, did the picking, the scoring, whatever. I just felt bored with this game. I didn't really feel excited about picking or scoring. I just kind of was... There was nothing exciting to me about this game. I mean, there was a little strategicness because you had to figure out uh, the colors. Like, you want to make sure you put the... Like, you have matching colors the on matching top. colors on your, on your board. So that, you know, you can get points and stuff on that. That's the about the extent of the strategy in this game. And and that and that's that's a good st- you have to think about that cuz I think I screwed up one time and then do right. But it was just one of those games where I was just kind of like I can't wait to be done with this game. It's kind of boring. I'm ready for something else. That's kind of how I felt. And I'm glad you felt that way because that's exactly how I felt. I showed this to Charday. I said, I have a game. It's somewhat similar to Azul and the fact that it's abstract and we have these little nice little colored pieces that we're going to put on our boards and move them around and score points. That's the extent of the similarity between this game and Azul. Azul is so much fun. Azul I enjoy. Yes. I played this game. Me and Jerry and Enrique played this game. None of us cared for it. We're like, we see what it does. It's fine, but it's boring. It's just not fun. But I purchased this with uh, Gina and you in mind because I was thinking it's not because there's. How dare you? (laughs) (laughs) I do. This is a thing as board gamers. When, like, I'm thinking of games, okay, this is a game I would play with Jerry and Enrique. This is a game that I want to play board games so badly. In my messed up mind, I'm thinking, if I purchase this game, maybe I can get my wife and someone else that's not really into board games to play a board game. That's the desperateness of board game players when we get to a certain level. It's like we're looking for games for all sorts of different groups, which is stupid because the majority of time... It never works out. The people don't really care. Gino doesn't really care to play games. And then, like, I Here. purchased this one, and it's like, Charday, who is not heavy into games, but she enjoys playing them. She's like, you know what? This game is boring. Here's how I feel about board gaming. I know I've already said this, but I am not necessarily against board games. I have to be in a certain mood <laughs> to play a board game. Like, you can just play a board game any like every uh, day nearly. Generally, yes. And like me, if I'm tired, I, I don't feel like it. it. Uh, there's times I'd rather just play a video, a video game or watch a movie. But in general, I have a board game set up and I'm playing it solo or I, I, I right. would enjoy I've playing seen, a game with you. I've seen you play a lot of solo games. And, you know, honestly, like I once I learn a game and, I, and it, it might be a complicated game, once I learn it, I'm into it. I like it. I want to keep going. So it's not like I hate board games. I just I ha- it, it takes me a second to learn the game. Yeah. And then once I know the game, I'm ready more to than, beat the crap than, out of you and, and like win the crap out of you, you know. Uh-huh. Mandala Stones, give me your rating. Zero to ten. I would say for this game, I would probably give it a four. I also have given it a four. It's a very much a meh. All right, that's going to do for this episode of Mini Pod Sesh number nine. I'm number Gabby. Nine. I'm Charday. Bye bye. Later, dudes.